in Nigeria, 2001, we, we thought we should take the kids home to see their native country. We all went home for Christmas celebration and uh, everything went on fine until the Christmas night by about 2 a.m. My daughter started throwing up, got to the point that she was uh, confused and passing out. There was no emergency service in Nigeria and being a registered nurse in America. I have uh, worked as a nurse and saved many lives. Here I am in the middle of the night. No one to call to rescue my daughter. I continued to pray and woke up everybody to pray for her. I promise God, if you save my daughter, I'll come back and do something in the medical field. For the first time in this country, as far as I know, I don't know about other places, it might be elsewhere. We are trying to introduce the real ambulance service. This is the emergency response unit attached to this hospital. This is the first response as we know it internationally. We spoke with a Gerber Ambulance, and Gerber Ambulance is one of the largest ambulance corporations in uh, Los Angeles. They asked me if I would donate a couple ambulances to them to take them to Nigeria. The program just kind of escalated from that point on. Um, the Onwunis asked, will there be a, a way that Gerber Ambulance Service can perhaps come to Nigeria and teach the students at the hospital? By empowering many other people uh, with those skills so that they go out, it's the ripple effect, you know, the rock hitting the pond and 20 minutes later the ripple hits the far shore. Mr. Stephen Lemon, in his contribution, encouraged the students to take the training seriously and avail themselves of the opportunities provided by the training. Our first phase was to get the actual ambulances on the ground in Nigeria with the proper equipment, uh, which we did. Uh, we put together the team during that first phase, the concept, how we're going to do it, what we're going to do, uh, the plan of action, basically. Uh, from there, uh, we went forward with that, and we went into Nigeria. Uh, we spent uh, the week there. We also brought, uh, donated some other equipment, uh, CPR mannequins, books, um, different uh, medical supplies as well with us to help enhance the program, and we trained. Practical drills was also a major segment of the training. It includes training on artificial respiration, adequate use of modern facilities in checking blood pressure, for air treatment in cases of accident. This is actually phase three, where we have uh, Dr. Adi, um, who's the representative on that side, to come here and train with us for uh, uh, two months. Uh, we found Dr. Adi at the hospital, and uh, he attended all the training classes, and we talked to him. He's a husband, a father of four children. I think he understands, being a doctor as well, the value of life. Nigeria has all the potentials. The challenge is actually enormous, you know, it's like um, starting something from the scratch. The idea of this ambulance service is completely alien to Nigeria and to Nigerians. This is Dr. Gadi from Nigeria. Hi. He is a uh, medical director of the emergency services for Nigeria. He's visiting. He, he's trying to learn about Amer American medicine. That was a really big milestone in our eyes to finally get Dr. Adi here to the United States to be able to to take advantage of what we have here. We got a multi-entry visa for the doctor which means, yes, for two years he can come in and go back, such as ourselves. So the door is open now, uh, no question. We reach out, we've made some contacts with what we call the 100 Ibus. Uh, it's a United States group of Nigerians um, that came, uh, representative came here and sat with us on our meeting and, and wants to support it as well and hopefully get us to the different government officials to help 
uh, get some funding. And you are? I'm sorry. Udo Asone. Udo? Asone, yeah. Asone. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Udo Asone. Uh, 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 and you're interested in the program. I'll come out blunt. Well, see strange faces it's in. unlimited. We've got to have EMS in Nigeria. Okay. So that was the last thing I do. Because I was thinking of uh, coming on, Monday, on Sunday, oh, but okay. since you have your meeting today, I think it's important that this mm -hmm. moves forward. So it was Gerber. Uh, the Anglican Church and, and uh, Tobinian Unis with the Max and Sill Foundation. So we three are actually teamed up to provide uh, the funding uh, to help this go forward. The benefits of the church, obviously, and all their goodwill and their monies are, is only going to go so far. And uh, government's going to have to embrace it. So Leo grizafi has been in direct contact with Jane Harmon's office with, in, in getting this process moving forward. When he was in Nigeria, his biggest goal was to visit the embassy, uh, talk to the people in charge there to show them that this was a real project, and uh, he successfully did that. Went to Abuja and uh, spoke with the people there and helped facilitate, obviously, the doctor coming and spending his time here now. So, But I'd just like to know where we're currently at with Jane Harmon or where we're at with certificates. After last week's meeting, and got everybody's name spelled properly and their titles down properly. Took them over to Jane Harmon's office and worked with Patricia Brockton. Uh, she's preparing the certificates, uh, awards, whatever can be done, letters of appreciation from the Congresswoman. They will be ready before the, uh, the doctor leaves for Nigeria. I want to interject something on this funding program that just came up. The U.S. government unofficially is very cautious about Nigeria. They're very cautious even about programs that are NGO programs going over there and funding money because they're seeing money being sent over there to an oil-rich country that gets a lot of U.S. dollars in oil and they're not putting the money into their own infrastructure. not having seen an emergency room before yes. and uh, who we are being told to set up one. We are wondering how do we set up what we don't know yeah, about. Yeah, that's true. You know, I've taken care of shootings, dissecting aneurysms, mm -hmm. heart attacks and stuff here. So anybody that's really critical. It was pretty unanimous. I mean, when the idea first came up of who, it was like the doctor. Because of his demeanor, because of his professionalism. That's our paramedic landline. Uh, we did a 12 lead day kit, EKG uh -huh. on a doc, shows yeah. some uh, ST and T wave abnormality, consider inferior lateral ischemia, sinus rhythm. Got some picking up so much in such a short time, yeah. you know. All I need is uh, for this EMS system, catch the process mm -hmm. and see how I can adapt what is here to our own what situation yes. exactly. yeah. so that we'll get started. When we get started, we can always yeah. begin to on. Yes, oh. advance technologically. We don't have a specific addresses and no. maps that will direct us. <laughs> no times, guys. <laughs> and this will have family names. GPS. Yeah, GPS for what? Global positioning global. system. Global. global. G stands oh, okay. for global. Okay. Okay. GPS positioning uh, system. Okay. And, yeah. and then they have you know latitude, longitude, mm -hmm. and you can tell exactly where you are. Um, Dr. Soji actually brought that to. Uh, uh, the doctor's attention is utilizing handheld GPS systems because they work all around the world mm -hmm. as identifiers of locating patients or to be able to find where they're at or at least tell the other people with the other GPS, the support team, where to go and they can actually locate it via a GPS system. Um, I think we're on the right track. Okay. Here we are in downtown Torrance. Uh, we're utilizing the motorbikes along with the GPS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be yeah. very I would idea. Idea. When we go hiking or camping in the backcountry, that's what we use all the time. Yeah, on, our, on our quad. Okay, they're simpler. This is a little more complicated. Okay. It has more bells and whistles. This is it's looking for satellites. These are the ones that locked on last. So these mm -hmm. are the satellites. And once it gets three satellites, it can tell you where it is. Okay, well have a good time with that. Oh, yeah, thank if you. you have any questions, let me know. Okay? Yeah, thank so, you. I want to so take much. off. Bye. Thank you.
Wow. We are building up one step at a time. Where I worship here, since I came in here, is in downtown Los Angeles. And it's an Igbo Anglican church. You know, they worship in Igbo. I came to this place courtesy of a couple who had a dream. And that couple is here. They are very shy people. They don't like publicity. But this is a couple that knows how to give. We were out there at, uh, in a local village community hospital, you know, mission hospital. All of us should know, most of us should know Ian Hospital of Giddy. Most of us should know. It's an old hospital founded in 1907 by the Anglican Mission. And out there things are deplorable. Let's just put it very mild. But this couple moved a group of Americans here with them to make big donations to us. They gave us two big ambulances, fully equipped with all the life support. And whenever you see any of the 911 rigs running around, they made sure everything that was in any of those vehicles was also in the ones they gave to us. I had heard that you were going to be here, and I came, I think it was one time, one day, fairly recently, I spoke with Dr. Soji, and you had gone for the day, but he showed me some of the, he showed me your wish list, and he's here, probably been through this part of the hospital. It looks like a fabric. Can we put some of these ones in there too? Yes, we can do that. Even if we had the money, we wouldn't be able to buy these. They are not simply available in our market. They are not there. So some of these are very special. I mean, the patients who use them are special patients. They will consider themselves privileged. Very That's what I mean. Whenever you hear the siren of the ambulance, uh, it's life. What here you would call code three, I mean, in acute extreme emergency. Over there, uh, it's um, um, you know a symbol of status. It shows that a rich man's corpse is, uh, is on its way back. The only time that they ever see an ambulance in um, most of Africa is when there's a funeral. The only time the sirens go on is when some important person has died and they get to run them across the town and say, look at how important this person is. Thank you. Dr. Peter, yeah. you got a call. Okay. So we go. Yeah. This is it. Where's Steve Guerrero? So oh. there's a traffic collision right now and we are just going to the scene. Jim? Oh, 
Torrance area. Probably Torrance. Okay, there. Can you squeeze my fingers? Alright. Our father's here. I just let him know you're doing fine. Are you going to Torrance Memorial to be evaluated? Okay. On to the next one. After we went to Nigeria, we all became like friends, family. So it's a big family. We've formed with, there's a, a big bond. bond now amongst us, within us, that uh, we are now like a family trying to rescue another continent. The trip really united us more and gave us the push more, even before we, when we left, we didn't know what we were going to encounter. But when we came back, we were now more motivated to get this program going. This is your last meeting, doctor, you know, before you go home. You know, all you gathered through these two months. So we'll see the strength and the weakness because we're gonna have more people do this by God's grace. You know, we have milk, mm. we have food, mm. and the bone, mm. okay, mm. in a training, mm -hmm. is what captures Nigerians. We want them to know that the money to fund this thing is not from America, it's in Nigeria. Our ultimate goal is to have a program, an EMS program established in Africa, run by Africans not funded by the United States, but run by the African community and be self-supporting. I told the first responder students there, I said, you're part of something that's a first. And it's very rare anyone can be a first of anything, but this is a first. And, you know, my dream of this down the road is that, you know, historically generations down the road, they look back to this crazy American team back in 2005 that just out of nowhere showed up and brought everything and, and, you know, delivered. We came in heavy and we left light. Now, the purpose of this is to expose this service to the Nigerian community, Nigerian government. We want this to be a nationwide project. And then make this even a national program. Let all the states of Nigeria, the 36 states in Nigeria, um, embrace it. And he has a daunting task, just as everybody knows, to be able to make Nigerians accept the emergency services so that there will be a partnership, because we cannot do it alone from here. They'll also help. Uh, you know, the team I put together uh, um, came through and are willing to do it on their time and their sweat, and uh, we all have. So now, uh, hopefully that's proof enough to uh, the Nigerian government or people in government to see the value of what we've done. Remember the, the ocean is made out of drops of water. It's a big ocean, but it can be broken down into droplets and atoms and everything. Everything starts with a little point. And you can even go back to quantum theory and go to string energy. Go in, down as far as you want. The end result takes just a start. Somewhere life movement had to start. And that's the same with a program like this. Little people can build revolution.
this is, this is gonna be filmed though, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, don't take the camera, let's follow me over here. <laughs> <laughs> follow me right, right over here. here. Uh, we are on a fire call right now. You know, blue represents fire. And uh, our paramedics are on a call to Fauda Street. And we have no clue what the chief complaint is until this white phone over here calls. And they let us know if we are official, code two or code three. Code three is lights and sirens, code two responding with no lights, no siren, non-emergency. We'll just put that back. That's it, peace out. Jimbo, remember attitude is, attitude is the everything. Remember it's that. everything, 100%. When, when you first came, uh, Dr. Peter, when you first came to the dispatch office, remember, attitude was important, huh? Yeah, yeah. We started off with a big bang, huh? Great. All smiles, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't forget that. I know you won't. Ah. Bye. Thanks.